very rapid years down the line. Right? So don't think about the physical injury straight away. What other injuries do you think you could have that could have an impact on your life? Well, it doesn't. Think about health, mental health as well, okay? You get stressed at work. <laughs> Everybody should be putting their hands up now. Yeah? If you're not getting stressed at work, can I have your job? Do you get stressed at work? No. No? No. <laughs> Do you ever get stressed at work? I work with Jack. I can't get stressed. Oh, can't, it's, can't get this. <laughs> too good. And also, it's a legal requirement. Okay, so in the UK, like I said, it's a legal requirement. I don't know what it's like back in your home countries, infrastructure, or anything like that. To have risk assessments. Good. So, I think that's good. Where are you from? Really? Oh. <laughs> So the Health and Safety at Work Act, okay, so some boring stuff that we'll try and get out of the way as quick as we can, okay. Section 2 <coughs> of Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 says it shall be the duty of every employer, so MSK, to ensure as so far as reasonably practical the health, safety and welfare at work all of his or hers employees. Okay, so basically what that means is we will put in a safety management system make sure you guys don't get hurt at work, okay? That safety management system is your MSK safety file, okay? Has everyone seen that MSK safety file before? Yes? yes. Yeah. Good. Everyone must, has everyone signed risk assessments before? Yeah. <laughs> yes? Good. <coughs> so, so far as reasoning practical, okay? This is very, very health and safety, okay? So the term means um, you need to Reduce the risk practically. Okay, so basically. In the easiest way. And the easiest way, yeah. So if you've got a risk here, but it's gonna cost hundred thousand pounds, then it's not that's not practical. Okay? So the best way to explain it is if we was say we was up on the second level here, um, and made the fire exit, <laughs> and obviously there's metal stairs, but there's exposed to the weather, what happens when it rains? It's slippery. It's slippery. So what would be the best way of stopping that from happening? Cover it in stones. Cover it. Okay, so if we built a brick structure around it, do you think that would be reasonably practicable? No. So what else could we do? What about if we painted it with some anti-slip paint? So that would be reasonably practicable. Okay? So obviously, money always talks. Okay, so we need to find the medium, okay, to be able to stop people from getting injured, <laughs> but also obviously financially <coughs> viable, okay? That's the best way I can explain it. It's basically, that scale there is what it means. Risk, time, cost and effort, okay? Effort and time seems to be sucked up by MSK quite a lot, trying to do other people's things, okay? Housekeeping on behalf of other people and things like that. So section two then, okay, says um, the principal contractor, okay, so whoever you're working for, must provide a safe <coughs> place of work with safe access and egress. Do MSK manage that at all, do you think? You mean what? In the well, so, so if you think about your project, do you think you manage MSK, do you think MSK manage safe access and egress? Yeah. To a yeah. certain degree, yes. okay, but however, it's wholly down to ISG or 8 build, yeah, whoever you're working for, yeah. they must look after that, okay? They must provide a safe working environment and welfare facilities, okay? So on your project there should be a, a canteen, a place for you to get changed, and a place for you to heat up food, okay? You also must have a chair like this, okay? You cannot have a chair with no back, okay? It's a legal requirement, so no benches or anything like that, okay? Has everyone got that on their side? Yeah, no. Good. No? no. Is it no? No. This one's you got. Yeah. Yeah. The ones yeah. the no, the bench is good. Yeah. Muscles have safe plant and equipment. Okay, with <coughs> necessary information, maintenance, instruction, training, and supervision. Okay, so if you guys are asked to use a beam hoist and you've not had training, what do you say to the client? I cannot use it. I cannot use it because I'm not trained. Okay? It's like we done some training with the electric panic truck the other day. It goes, you can get trained for everything. Get trained to push a broom. Yeah. Get trained to do this. It's get like trained to do that. Baseball, they get broke his legs. He's the big one. 
What's that? He broke his leg, he was carrying the passport if he left the public truck and he just forgot and started right. talking to someone in the public truck, like run over. They can go quite fast in electric public trucks. Okay, so you'll be very, very careful. Okay, so this is what MSK do. They provide training for you guys. Okay, we also provide supervision. Okay, so you guys are aspiring gangers, logistics managers. Okay, so you guys will be supervising your labor force at work. Okay. Maintenance and information. Okay, so think about the tools that you guys might use on site. They should always come pack tested. Okay, and they should always be checked by your site supervisor once a month. Okay. Every three months. Is that? It's not every three months. So every three months of pack testing. But every month for te for checking tools. Okay, we've got a nice form for that in the safety file. Okay. Safe use, handling, and storage of substances. Okay, so if we're moving any chemicals about. Who would use chemicals for MSK then? Welfare. Welfare, okay. What kind of things we need to think about if... Bleach. Bleach, what can and bleach do? Off on the problem uh, to clean the floor. Yeah, so a couple of years ago, we had a welfare man who was cleaning the toilet and, and he collapsed oh. on the floor. Okay, so we were trying to work out what, what had happened. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, we thought he used too much bleach. Oh yeah, it happened to me once when I was cleaning in a, the toilet. <laughs> in a cubicle. Yeah. However... Like, I, I didn't throw out anything else, but I was doing it already. So, we, what we thought was that he breathed in too much of the fumes. Mm -hmm. However, he was actually too hungover. Oh. Okay, so that's what we found out at the end. Oh, okay, yeah. so the mixture of too much beers the night before... That's better. And, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and the amount of bleach <laughs> caused him to collapse. Okay. So if anything like that, um, using any kind of chemicals, you need to have something called a cost assessment. Okay, cool. tells you basically the risk assessment for using chemicals. Okay. <clears throat> so section seven states, okay, it shall be the duty of every employee, okay, so you guys, okay, to take reasonable care of health and safety of himself and other people's welfare, basically. Okay, so if you guys, let's say for example, left a cable like this, that's running along the floor, say if you're hoovering up, and let's say someone from MJL comes over, breaks their leg, you guys could be responsible for that guy's accident. Okay? And the people who manage this, the health and safety executive, the HSE, they could say, right Ramona, you've had an accident on site, or you've caused an accident on site, we're gonna take you to court, and you can actually go to prison as well. Okay? If you also get massive fines, dependent on the size of the company, they will issue a fine that will seriously have massive financial impacts. Okay? So my job, health safety manager, Ramona's job, health safety assistant, is to make sure that you guys don't end up in court. Okay? Or end up any fines. Okay? Well, we've got, when you say fines, it goes straight for the companies or for our subs? Both. They've changed it now. So both the HSE will go for the company and they can also prosecute, prosecute an individual as well now, mm. which is quite new. And it never used to be like that, it just used to be the company. Okay. <clears throat> so, da, 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 da. so basically B is exactly the same as A. Basically saying you must listen to health and safety advice. So, the Management of Health and Safety Regulations, 1999. <coughs> Regulation 3 states that every employer shall make a suitable and sufficient assessment of the work about to be undertaken. Okay, so basically what that means is MSK must take a risk assessment for whatever you guys do on site. Luckily, we thought about this already and we've got about 115 risk assessments in the safety file for you guys to use. Okay. If you are asked to do anything that's not in the safety file, speak to your contracts manager first, and you might say, oh, I've got one of these already. Okay? If not, they'll probably come to myself, and we'll have a look at it, and we'll say yes or no if you guys can do it or not. Okay? You must always make sure the risk assessment is in place before you start work. Okay? If it's not, and you have an accident, as site supervisors, you will be responsible. So facts and figures then, okay? In 2020, 2021, 142 people were killed at work, okay? So that's quite a lot, okay? That's not just construction, that's 
all work Generally, places. Okay. okay. So you think that's probably one every other day? Someone dying at work? Yeah. Okay. Not good at all. Okay. Four, over 400,000 workers sustained non-fatal injuries um, from the labour labour force survey. Okay, so 440,000 people doing labour intensive work. It's a lot of people. It's like 100 a day, over 100 a day. So think about obviously construction, think about manufacturing, farming, all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's serious injuries, and that's seven days over seven day injuries as well. Okay, 51,000 employee non-fatal injuries reported under Riddle. Okay, so that means they could have broken their leg, could be off work for seven days or more, they could have broken their arm or anything like that. Okay, so and these are quite serious injuries, 51,000, which is a lot. A thousand a week, nearly. So non-fatal injuries then, 33% of them are slip, trips or falls on the same level. So what do you think could cause a slip or trip or fall? <coughs> Cables. Cables? Any kind of dust, it might be broke. Anything yeah, like things like that. Broken ground. Step ladders. Step ladders, leaving step ladders about. Equipment. Equipment? <coughs> or about water? Water too. Slippery. Okay, oils, things like that. Anything that you can slip on. That road out there is really slippery. Even protection of floor. Yep, that's a really, really good one, okay? If the correct protection is yeah. not taped down properly, I do it all the time, not looking where I'm going, <laughs> kick it in my boots, <laughs> nearly fall over. Okay? Other things that can happen as well, if the protection gets ripped, okay, especially Corex, if you get your foot caught in between it, you're gonna fall over. Not only gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna look very stupid as well. Okay, fall around in front of people. <laughs> 20%, 18% then, handing, lifting or carrying, okay? Do you think MSK do that on site? <laughs> Silly question, okay? What, what kind of things do we move? Bins. Bins? How heavy are the bins? <coughs> That's the one inside. That is a good question, isn't it? <laughs> so if you're full of plasterboard, 500 kilos maybe? It's four plasterboard, potentially? Yeah, if it's full of... Um, Spring tiles, wipe. spring and pipes, off cuts. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. heavy. If it's full of carpet tiles, again, it's going to be very heavy. If it's full of insulation, it's going to be nice and light. Okay. <laughs> cables, no cables. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but don't get caught out in cables. It's the dirty, it's the MD over there will not be happy. Okay. I've been in the yard yesterday, Jesus Christ. There was a mountain of cables there. See, like, dude, like 10 meters tall. That's where the cable would go. <laughs> they don't go back to there and you can wave goodbye to your job. People have done it before, taking cable, and they can't work for MSK again. It's too much for it. It's not worth it. For a couple hundred quid, it's not worth it. <laughs> Struck by a move, moving object then. Okay? What do you think that could be? People dropping tools yeah, from up high? Okay, so what if we're working at height of tools, what should we have? Harness. Uh, yeah, harness for the tools, okay, a tool tether, okay. Acts of violence, anyone had that on site before? Anyone seen any fights? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Happens all the time? No. No, it does sometimes, okay, over the last couple of years, we, um, I'll tell you a little story, uh, ironically we won the uh, Health and Safety League for that month, site supervisors having a bit of an argument with, I think some scaffolders, you don't really want to argue with scaffolders as it is anyway. So he's got the site supervisor, he said something to one of his labourers, like, get out of the way, or swore at him. So he's got on the scaffold tube, the little one, and got to hit the scaffolder with him. Okay? Acts of violence, he no longer works for MSK anymore. So after winning the Health and Safety Award, red card. Okay? Pull some height? Do um. we work at height at all? <laughs> scaffolders, yeah. Obviously, yeah. MSK, if we're operating in beam hoist or anything like that. Towers. 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 Everyone here done plasma training? No. Pop ups. Yeah. Pop ups. I did. Mm. Okay. What about going on the back of vehicles? What do you need to go on the back of a vehicle? Edge protection. Edge protection first. Mm -hmm. Edge protecting everyone before you put a harness on. Okay. 
<clears throat> so, 1.7 million workers suffered from work-related ill health, okay? Could have been something like a mental health problem, or it could be something like diabetes or something like that, okay? 850,000 workers suffered from a new case of work-related health in 2020, 2021. What do you think that could be? COVID. COVID. Yeah. Okay. Musculoskeletal injuries, okay? So, basically, injuries of your back, okay? <laughs> 470,000 workers suffering from work-related musculoskeletal injuries, okay? People lifting up things they shouldn't be doing, lifting like this, mm. okay? Have you only done manual handling training before? Yeah. Very boring, yeah. like this, okay? <laughs> when you've done it like that all the time, you'd never get a big down. 162,000 workers suffer a new case of work-related musculoskeletal disorders in 2020-2021, okay, because maybe there's a lack of supervision, lack of management on site, okay, people doing what they need to be doing because of COVID, which is now finished on Thursday, if anyone didn't know, okay, or well, what a waste of time that was, two years of doing nothing. Mental health injuries, okay, over 800,000 people <coughs> Suffering from work-related stress, depression, or anxiety. Okay? Anyone got stressed at work, like I said earlier? Everyone has. Okay, if you're not getting stressed at work, then you've got the best job in the world. Okay? What do you think causes stress at work? Then? <coughs> what do you think causes stress at work? Site managers. Site managers? Because too much of that? Yeah. Do that, do that, do that. What else do you think causes stress at work? People rushing. Pressure. People rushing. Pressure. Okay. Don't get paid. Pay means wrong. Thank you. <laughs> That's the one I wanted to hear. <laughs> don't get paid. All right. What do you feel like if you see your wage limit is wrong? Oh, don't feel good. Oh. How good? How how angry do you get? Too much. Steam coming out your ears, nearly. Yeah. Like a kettle. Okay. What do we come to work for? I need. I don't come here for anything else, do we? Okay, if you're getting paid wrong, it causes stress. Okay, it's a big, big bugbear of mine. Okay, so if you do have any money issues or anything like that, your money's wrong, speak to your contracts, just contracts manager straight away. Okay, it's really, really important. Okay, and money is probably. But when, it, when it's his fault, it's hard, isn't it? Like we had that experience before. Yeah. If it's the contracts right. manager's fault, well then he should make sure that he, he sorts it out. He was saying all the time, I'm going to sort for you, no problem. And, it, and then next next week, no payment again. Yeah. Well, that's this not good. This happened to me one month ago. Has it been, been sorted now? Week, yeah, for now, week. yeah. Has yes. it been sorted week. now? Because I sit next to him on the office. Step by step, week by week. Right. As long as it's getting sorted, because yeah. I don't like hearing people having problems like that, and I'll try yeah. and sort it out yeah, for you. Yeah, but that was two years, two years ago. <coughs> two years ago. Yeah. I think recently, no? No. Yeah. I want to start upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> he was get stressed. I'll, I'll start stressing dumb people out. Okay, but yeah, money, the big one. Okay, right, so we all come to work, so we'll see you have money. Okay. Cancers from hazardous hazardous substances and cost then. Okay, twelve thousand new lung diseases last year. Okay, or each year, um, because of work related exposure. Okay, so what kind of things could cause a lung disease? Dust. Dust. What kind of dust? Oh. Silica dust? Yeah, silica. Um, dust, by dust. Asbestos, okay? So uh, asbestos is a, is a hidden killer. Okay, if you breathe in asbestos dust, it doesn't matter how fit you are, where you come from, if you're a man, female, if you breathe in asbestos dust, you, it can cause, obviously, cancer to the lung, and it will kill you, okay? There's no two ways about it. If you breathe in asbestos dust, it can be fatal, okay? In 2019, there was 2,000 mesothelioma deaths, okay? That number is coming down now quite a lot because people are doing asbestos awareness training and asbestos is getting removed from buildings, okay? However, the new one is gonna be silica. Before we know it, silica dust will be just as deadly as asbestos, okay? So when I come on site and say, make sure you've got your mask on if you're sweeping up, loading the compacts or anything like that, I'm not doing it to be an arsehole, I'm doing it to protect you guys at work, okay? And when I mean the masks, I don't mean the little blue masks either, I mean the proper FFP3s, okay? 17,000 new cases of breathing and lung problems caused, by may caused or made worse by, obviously, working on site, 
right? Breathing in dust, right? It's not good. COVID. Anyone here have COVID? No. Yeah. <laughs> Two times? Yeah. So everyone's had it? Uh, you managed to swerve it? it? Well done. How have you done that? You've done well to manage to swerve it. Okay, so 93,000 workers <coughs> suffered COVID from 2020 to 2021. Okay, that number is probably not even correct. No, the amount of people who've probably had it twice, three times, or not even had it at all. Okay. People have got all different choices on COVID. Obviously, if you're going to go and get vaccinated or whatever, it's up to people's personal choice. Okay. It does seem like it's slowly going away, okay, which is a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions on COVID? Want to move on? So, even the bigger thing apart from COVID then, stress, the effects of COVID on your families, on if you don't go to work, what don't you get? You get money, okay? So again, stress, depression, anxiety, that's probably more of a bigger issue than COVID itself, okay? Other types of illnesses, musculoskeletal disorders, potentially made worse by COVID, okay? However, we don't. The main kinds of fatal accidents then, okay? Talk about fatal accidents, people that kill. Falsome height, okay, it's the biggest one. 40 people last year were killed, falling from height, okay? Struck by a moving vehicle, very, very close behind. Do you think MSK get involved with moving vehicles? Thanks, man, okay? You think if you get hit by our 38 ton compactor, who's gonna win? It's gonna be a compactor, isn't it? Okay, so, so I'll make sure that we've got our banks in place and they know what they're doing. Okay, it's really, really important. Struck by a moving object then. Okay, that means something falling down, okay, or something moving very, very quickly. Contact with moving machinery, okay, getting sucked in to something, okay, eats you up. Okay, we have had a very, very close, near fatal accident a couple of years ago where someone got caught in a machine, okay, could have been called fatal. Trapped by something collapsing or overturning. Okay, if you think about a forklift, if they're lifting up something really high, and they turn too quickly, the forklift could fall over. Okay? Forklifts weigh about three, four tonne. Obviously, you're standing next to it, finish. Okay? Game over. Enough about people dying now. Let's talk about how we're going to stop people from dying. <laughs> so, who wants to give that a go? What is a hazard? Come and tell me what, what they think it has it is. Something that can harm you. Something that can harm you? Yeah? Everyone agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, so a hazard is something with the potential to cause harm. Okay? Really, really simple. That's all it is. Like that. Bear trap. Okay? So on the risk assessment then, we've got this box here. Okay? It highlights pretty much everything that could go wrong on site. So this one here then, do you think that's covered in that box? Trapment. Entrapment. What else could happen? So if he strips on it and it goes on his ankle, what else could happen? So if he's stuck in it, he's walking. Slips and trips. So you've got slips, slips and trolls, balls. Entrapment, impoundment, potentially because the jaws are going to impound his leg. Okay. We've also got some empty boxes as well, so you could put in there, maybe if it is all rusty, it could be potentially you could catch a disease or anything like that from it. Okay. Obviously, hopefully, we never have anything like that on site, okay, only if we're trying to catch animals outside. So, what's a risk then? Who wants to give that a go? What's, what's, what's the definition of a risk? May I? Go on then. <laughs> the likelihood of that hazard to actually cause it. And? And what then? So there's two parts of risk. And the severity. Bang. Well done, Adam. So it's the likelihood of it happening, and it also tells you of what can happen. Okay? So what could happen there? Broken ankle pain, deep cuts, lacerations, infection leading potentially to amputation, because you could lose your foot. Splinters, stub your toe, 
Anyone done that before? Not wearing your shoes? Boom, kick the side of the bed? It's the worst pain in the world. Hey, worse than childbirth. Horrible. <laughs> Come on. So possible risk identified then, okay? So then we'll tick them on the, when we do the risk assessment, we'll tick of what the risks are. Okay, nice and easy. Who's responsible then? So all employers and the self-employed are responsible for filling out a risk assessment. Okay, and making sure it's filled out and it's highlighted correctly. Okay. What risk should be accessed? All <coughs> risks should be accessed so it can cause harm to yourself and to other people on site and the members of the public. Okay? You've got to think about everything. How thorough should the risk assessment be? Who knows this one? Who knows the answer to this? Suitable and sufficient. Can anyone tell me what that means? There's no definition for it. Okay? So basically what that means is if you do a risk assessment and someone gets hurt at work, the HSC will say that's not suitable or sufficient. So basically it's impossible, you can't win. <laughs> is anyone cold? You're cold, aren't you? Oh, no, no, it's okay, it's alright, it's okay. Uh, yeah. right, the Arctic, it? So when do you assess it then? So when do you fill your risk assessment in? What do you think? Before you start work. Okay, before any new work begins, okay? before we start work, we must put the risk assessment in place. Do you have to record your risk assessment? Yes. Yes, if you have five or more employees, which MSK does. Do you have to review your risk assessment? Yes. Yes, as necessary. So every year, myself and Trevor, we have to go through every single risk assessment in a safety file to make sure that it's still suitable and sufficient. It takes months. So when we come onto site and we see you're not using the latest one, we get very upset. Okay. And when he gets very upset? Then Ramona gets very upset. <laughs> so what do you need to do then? Okay. You need to look for the hazards. Okay, so this is when you guys are filling in the risk assessment. Look for the hazards. Walk around the workplace and look afresh at what can <laughs> cause harm in the activity that you do. Okay, so think about MSK operatives, other people on site, and the members of the public. Okay, could they be harmed at what you're doing? Could members of the public get harmed from banking a vehicle? Okay, they're probably even more likely to get injured because all they want to do is sit there and look at their phone. Okay, earphones do things like that. Ignore the trivial. Okay, think about them as significant hazards. Okay, so think about what could cause the most harm first. Okay, highlight them on first, and then work your way down. What could cause, obviously, death, and then move down from major injuries. What's trivial? Trivial is something very minor. Okay. So something that could cause, I don't know, maybe slipping on the carpet if it was, if it was wet or something like that. Ask your employees, okay, what they think, okay? So when we do, sometimes when we do our risk assessments, we send them out and say, does anyone want to add anything to this, okay? I can't think of everything. You guys are doing the work on site. You might say, Jack, actually, when we're putting Harris fencing up, for example, you could catch your finger in the clip, yeah? I might not think of that, okay? So I could put that in a risk assessment. <coughs> Use manufacturer's inst instructions or data. Okay, so if we're using anything like Pico lifts, forklifts, anything like that, we'll get their information from there, and they will say this is what the risks are. Okay, so we need to make sure we've covered that in the risk assessment. Okay, and finally, we'll refer to any old accident or incident records. Okay, we'll look over the last three or four years of what the biggest cause of accidents were. The last year was people's hands. For some reason, people's hands were getting crushed, cut losing them to fingers, all sorts. The year before that was people falling downstairs. We had five accidents of people falling downstairs and breaking their legs. I don't know why. It's weird, very weird. Who could be harmed? Okay, so we need to think about that. Employees, young workers, trainees, new and expectant mothers, okay? So if you've got anyone under the age of 18 working on your site, you need to let your contract manager know. 
okay? Because they will need to put a young person's risk assessment in place. Same thing if you've got any ladies on site, when they fill out the induction form, if they tick yes to say they're pregnant, we must put a risk assessment in place, okay? If you've got any health problems, diabetic, or if you are, um, I'm trying to think of some other, other health issues that we've had in the past, asthmatic as well. If you're asthmatic and breathing in dust, obviously can, can lead to other issues. Okay. So on the person's at risk box, full tick, of how many people it's going to affect and who it's going to affect. If you're using equipment, okay, you must be trained. Okay, so that'll be part of the risk assessment. It will say in there, you must be trained to use this equipment. If you're not trained, don't use it. Okay, so you don't even have to put a risk assessment in. Okay. The equipment accessories must be serviceable. Okay. It must be maintained in, cord in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. Okay. So you think about if you're using a forklift, it must be inspected weekly as minimum. Okay. And it must also, if you're using lifting equipment, it must have a thorough examination certificate. Okay. If you're using things like electric pallet trucks, Beam hoists, good hoists, you must make sure we've got all the certificates in place before we use it, okay, and before we fill out the risk assessment. Again, we've got a section in the risk assessment already done for you for pretty much everything that we use on site, okay. Principles of prevention then, okay. What we want to try to do then, we want to try to use a less risky option. Okay, so if we're trying to do something on site, okay, we've got to use a grinder, for example, could we use a recip saw? Okay, it's less risky, less risk of fire, less risk of hand arm vibration, less risk of obviously the disc gets exploding. Okay. Prevent access to the hazard, okay, by guarding. Okay, make sure we've got guards on things like grinders and things like that. Okay. Organise work to reduce exposure to the hazard, okay? By putting barriers around, okay, making sure people don't come into your work area. Okay. And lastly, but not, I say lastly, issue PPE. Okay, that's the last result. Okay, if we can't do all of them above, we need to obviously give you some equipment to stop you from getting injured. Okay. So it could be if you're using a grinder, it could be goggles, PPE defenders, dust masks, all that kind of stuff. <coughs> Just like that man there. Again, PP required will be in the risk assessment. <clears throat> so evaluate the risks then. Add control measures. So when we go and fill out our risk assessments today, you'll write on there what risks you that pose, and then you need to think about how you can stop that risk from happening. Okay, call a control measure. Okay, so when we go to fill out our risk assessments together, we're going to say, we're going to take down these gla glazing panels here. What's the risk there? What could happen? What could happen mm -hmm. if we're taking one out? They could break. So how could we stop it from breaking? Maybe getting two people to hold it. Okay, so that's part of a control measure. Okay. And you must consider how likely it is that each hazard could cause harm to yourself. Even after all precautions have been taken, some risk usually remains, okay? The aim is to reduce the risk as far as we can, okay? So basically, we always understand that accidents are going to happen, but we want to try to make them as minor as possible, okay? There may be a small cut from a bit of glass, we'll probably take that if it was to break. But if we didn't have any control measures in place, a big bit of glass could come down and cut your arm really badly, okay? Decide for each significant hazard whether this remaining risk is high, medium or low. If it's still medium or high, we can't do it. Okay? We need to put more control measures in place to make it low. Okay? You need to think about, have you done everything the law requires? Okay? So the site specific phase, when we go to the risk assessment, we'll talk about that bit and make more sense. So record in the assessment then. If you if you employ five or more people, you must record the significant findings on your assessment. Okay, that's law. Okay. 
This means recording the significant hazards and what conclusions. You need to be able to show that a proper assessment has been made. Uh, you, assess, you assessed it and you're assessing who it could affect. You deal with uh, obvious significant hazards and how people could be affected. Okay, Basically, everything that you said there must be, it must uh, come out as low. If it doesn't, then we have to, have to really look at it. I know this is lots of information. When we go to do it, it makes a lot more sense. Okay. So reviewing the risk assessment then. So as the job progresses, new machinery substances will be introduced. Okay, and they could have new, new issues. Okay. So you think about a loading bay. Okay. Do you think that changes quite a lot? No. Not really. Depends. What about if it's moved to the other side of the building? Oh. Yes. So then obviously if the loading bay moves or if there's new or if they open up the footpath or anything like that, we need to make sure we highlight in the risk assessment. Okay. If there are any significant changes, okay, speak to your contract manager. Okay, but we have got a site specific page on the back of the risk assessment to make changes straight away, okay, which <coughs> must be completed. Do not amend these assessments for every trivial change. Okay, so if it's a minor, minor, minor change. You'll be writing now, you'll, all you'll end up doing is just writing all day and never getting the job done. Okay? It's good practice to review the assessment from time to time to ensure precautions are still working effectively. Okay, so MSK, so myself and Trevor, every year we go through them once a year. Okay? But if like I say, if your loading bay changes or you've got a moist in a different location, then you obviously need to make do a different risk assessment because wherever the beam moist is, it's gonna be a different risk. Okay. So things that supplement a risk assessment then, things that go with it, okay? Manual handling assessment, okay? They were included in our housekeeping one, okay? Cost assessment for our welfare lady or welfare man, okay? We've got all the cost, cost assessments done. So all you've got to do is, is just attach it with your welfare risk assessment, okay? Noise assessment. <coughs> what kind of tools could we be using that cause large amounts of noise? Kango. Kango, grinder. Grinder. Hand on vibration. What tools cause that? Can I go? Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Jigsaw? It's a big one. Multi tool? Even do. Okay. Drill? Hammer drill? Okay. Environmental assessment. Okay, so if we're <coughs> dealing with diesel, petrol, and we drop that on the floor and it goes into a river, okay, we're going to kill all the fish, which is not good. Okay. <coughs> Lifting plans, okay? That's something that I will do. So if you've got any forklifts or any hoists on site, I will come and do a lifting plan for you guys. It tells you what you can lift and what you can't lift and how much you can lift as well. So method statements then, okay? They're not required by law, okay? Method statements are not required by law. Only risk assessments are required by law, okay? However, a method statement commute communicates a safe systems of work, okay? Basically an instruction of how to do the work and how to do it safely, okay? But once you've filled out the risk assessment, that's not good enough. You must make sure you have a risk assessment in place to supplement it, okay? It's used mainly for complex tasks, okay? So strip out works, things like that. Or if you've got a loading bay that's really, really congested with lots of people. It gives information on how the job or process is to be done and it should be easy to understand. Okay, so we're going to do a method statement for various different things today. Okay. Copies should be kept and signed in your safety file. Okay. Okay. Keep that up there. Any questions on that? That is just all the legal jargon, okay? Time is 10 to 9. Come back here at 9 o'clock, and we're going to do the practical side of it, which takes about two hours. Okay. So, do we go grab yourself a quick coffee? Just go through that little hole there.